So this entire project actually came about when I was joking around with Brandon in between shots because the thing is is that out of the box, a RED 8K camera, so this is one of their DSMC2 platform cameras or whatever, it's got their Helium 8K sensor on it. Out of the box, they're super compact to the point where like it's kind of a miracle that they managed to keep the things cool because there's a lot of data moving through them. But the thing is, by the time you rig them up with your external display, your big old lens, your couple battery packs, your quick release, your, um, what's this thing called? Your, your top handle, whatever else. Like they're so bulky that it wouldn't be that much of a stretch then to like clip a radiator to it. And we're kind of joking about this and laughing and then all of a sudden, got serious. Why don't we water cool a camera? Well, I couldn't think of a reason not to. So here we are. Oh God. So here's the thing. I'm not sure if anybody's ever done anything like this before. Even just tearing it down. Like when I search for red camera disassembly, I get like a, a manual from Rocket Rentals, something about a Leica M camera. Now there's a Red Epic X 5K camera teardown, but Extreme Tech didn't actually do it. They just grabbed some photos of the FCC's teardown where they made sure it complied with all the rules and regulations and stuff. It would appear that after a cursory Google search anyway, we are in uncharted waters here. Waters, get it. Oh. I have no instructions. All I have is this camera body and this iFixit kit and this uh, my phone because I'm gonna be taking a lot of pictures as I go here to hopefully make sure that I don't screw this up too badly. So there's a few things that we do know. We can see that our main cooling heatsink is right by this vent here. So there's our intake, I believe. No, that looks like our exhaust. And then here's our intake. Yeah, that says intake fans right there. And so it's blowing through the body this way and out that way. So the, the cooling seems to take place at the back. So maybe we could start at the back? You know what? Let's, let's start from the bottom. We're going, we're going bottom up. Ugh. You know, I feel like I need one of those project mats. Here we go. Just make myself a handle. Okay. No. Well, that's it, I give up. Forget it. <laughs> sure, this is gonna be a system that will work great because holding the threads like that, we will definitely be able to see how long the screw is. Oh. Okay, so this is their monitor attachment and then this is, uh, David, what does this one do? I don't know. Okay, I don't know, but what that means is that there could be delicate ribbon cables behind any pieces that we remove. We're kind of working blind here and we don't want to pull too hard on things. Bloody hell, so this is loose, but this is not completely loose. Yeah, we are gonna need to loosen that somehow. Oh, crap. All right, well the next thing we can pull off is the mag holder. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. This actually looks like it might be simpler than I thought. So this is the uh, the mag reader right here, and it just uses a simple push-in connector that goes right there. And then that actually gives us access to this ribbon. I think it's this ribbon. Damn it, it's not that ribbon. Now, some of you watching from home including even ones that work at Red Digital Cinema, are probably wondering, why would you water cool a camera? What could you possibly hope to achieve? I mean, I'm not expecting any better performance. Cooling it more, um, while it could have the potential to increase its longevity, is not gonna get us more resolution or more FPS or, or, or anything like that. So I guess if I was gonna set out a success or fail bar for this project, it would be if we managed to make the camera cooler and or quieter. 
then I would consider it to be a massive success. Because as some of you will know, especially if you've worked with reds in an on-location environment uh, or in a setting that's, that's quite hot, uh, in between shots, they'll actually ramp up their fans quite a lot in order to keep the internals cool. Like they turn it off while you're shooting, which is good because you can't have a bunch of fan noise while you're trying to record audio. But uh, in between, they'll, they'll ramp them up quite high. So if we could find a way to eliminate that behavior, that would be pretty cool too. And aside from what exactly it is that we hope to accomplish, there are actually a lot of other things that we don't know yet either, including whether or not this is even possible, or if we are just barking up a completely empty, pointless tree. I mean, Red wouldn't tell us anything, so the only way for us to find out if the camera can even have its cooling changed is to open it up and see for ourselves. Starting to get a little nervous though. This is uh, not quite as simple as just pop off one side and be able to see. Oh, well there's that warranty void if removed. Wait, what the hell? How did this come off? Okay, oh, there's our button. Oh wow, this is not going to be easy. There's a cooling block here that looks like it's dealing with the bottom side of this. What looks like it should be a PCB, but it seems to be brass. Then there's what appears to be a second one right here, and it's interfacing with whatever this chip is right here. Then there are heat pipes that run down under this PCB on the side here into this heat sink right here, which is much larger than I anticipated. Like this is a serious machine. That is a significant amount of heat that they're trying to move away from it. So as far as I can tell, the next step is to remove this PCB and give ourselves a better look at the heat sink. Huh. So we've got a Xilinx Kintex 7 ASIC on here. I wonder what you do. Yep, I'm not even gonna try to guess right now. I'm sweating. Quite literally sweating right now. Oh. So this opens to reveal not a screw, but some kind of antenna connector. Okay, so this antenna connector is actually for something to do with up here in the fans. Oh, well, wait. Hmm. Hey, Brandon, does the red have any wireless functionality? Does it? Okay, there you go. So this presumably is our Wi-Fi chipset. Okay, so I was kind of worried about jumping the gun on removing the sensor housing because I don't want to get any dust on it or anything and I'm not exactly working in a clean room, but it appears as though I have just freed it. <laughs> oh, what the hell? This is all one big thing. Oh man. The housing for the sensor here at the front, it's come free. Um, when I remove the screws from the PCB here, but it's taking the heat sink with it. See that? The, the heat sink can't get out. Um, oh, and there's a separate heat sink back there. Oh man! Why are we doing this? This is a really stupid project. <laughs> oh, you bastard. What now? So there's a rubber grommet that the heat pipes pass through. Can you see that? There must be a thermal reason for doing it. Maybe it's just to control airflow to make sure that they don't lose any leakage. Ooh, that's in tight. Oh man, this has a wrench freaking head on it. Oh wait, you've gotta be kidding me. It's tightening up. Holy crap, it's turning the socket under it. That's bad. As long as I can rotate this a little bit, I can access the one on the other side. Oh my God, where did this plug into on the other end? I don't remember removing two ends of this. So oh, what, oh God, what is this? <laughs> well, you know about this project already. What, what pro? You didn't know that uh, we're getting started on it yet, I don't think. Oh, yo, is this the red? It's what remains of a red. So this guy goes on like this. You can tell from the glue on here and on here and how I ripped it off. And then this guy has, it's kind of like a GPU, I think, where there's like, a big chip and then some small chips around it that all have thermal goop on them. Okay. So that's that. Can you kind of envision it now? Picture them all uh, vertically aligned yeah, instead. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. So there's another couple components here. The idea is basically just have like this and then like a rad. Just kind of oh like yeah, the rad comes yeah. outside. So like where the air cooling exhaust is, we would just like put a couple friggin' holes in it and run tubing out. Would we even have space for fittings in the blocks? No. So we just have to like solder tubes right onto the blocks then? Possibly. But remember, these heat sinks go away. Yeah, true. Right? So if we, and, the, and these ribbons have a little bit of play. Mm -hmm. So we can make ourselves a little bit more room between these without giving up necessary space here because all these heat sinks go away. Yeah, like this one, this one, not too hard. I'm concerned about this one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and that also seems to be the one that needs the most cooling. Yes, that's the one with the heat pipes. This was a really bad idea. Yeah, but also like a good one. So how are we going to mount on here? Is it just thermal pasted on? Oh my God, no, it's screwed in from the top. Look at these gaps in the fins. These are not an accident. It's not gonna work. Why not? Give me one reason why not. Because you don't have enough clearance. I might. Not quite working. Yeah, I think we need to get a super skinny driver. Yeah, it seems like so it. That's gonna be a custom order part. Okay, so I've got these three screws off. Now, oh, it's far worse than I thought. There are no fewer than <laughs> 10 elements that need to be cooled on this one. Red doesn't subscribe to the less is more philosophy. Rose? What, what the <laughs> hell? I have never seen anything like that. Is that the chip? As far as I can tell. Oh, but it has two screw holes through it. How the hell do you make a water block for that? <laughs> well, why do you think I brought you in here? <laughs> this is quite the project. <laughs> so I guess what you're saying is, don't hold your breath for part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Coming to you 2020. <laughs> well, no, we can finish it next yeah, year. Yeah, it'll okay. be, yeah, next Like, year. we're gonna be on it, but like, holy <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> It's like operation, but. It's a victim, uh, not a patient. <laughs> This thing is so full of ASICs, like, no wonder the thing's so damn expensive. I wonder if some of them are just FPGAs. Well, what is this thing? <laughs> Hold on a second. No, it's not $5,000. Hold on a second. <laughs> it's 28 nanometer, though. Like, that's not... Yeah, that's pretty good. Like, bit tier stuff. So how much are they? Uh, it's hard to say. This is, uh... Extended price, $1,600 for one. And that's... That's just this chip, not like anything else. We are so f***ed. I mean, if we just have to like cobble the thing together and like kind of, you know, lean on it to close it. That's yeah, like funny. I think that if it's water cooled and then zip tied together, no one's going to complain. I guess this is just where we say goodbye and everyone hopes that we have another one soon. Yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Just kidding. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.